Rovers pick up a massive three points up against Peterborough United. At Ewa Park, of course, we're big bad boy Berta Diaz bagging a brace. But what's that done to the table? We'll take a look. Nah. Back once again another prediction video. That's right, folks. Back once again another match review. Look back, of course. Back with Rovers' latest match up against Peterborough, of course, at Ewood Park. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new, where you been? Smash your subscribe and get your bang up today. All things Rovers related, championship related, whoa, football league. Got it. We got it all here, boys. On the bloody road. That's right. We're of course in deepest, darkest Georgia, the state. And of course, I am here trying to give you my latest match review. Of course, for Blackburn Rovers taking off, of course, Peterborough United. We'll get to that in a minute. Big shout out to my VIPs. Who are they? They're the Patreons, boys, of course. Thank you for the love it. Of course, support the channel behind their bloody scenes. So let's get into the thick of things then, shall we? Of course, recap the game, which of course was Blackburn Rovers up against, of course, Peterborough United. In a game which, realistically, uh, we needed to win, really, just to keep us in the, in the discussion, of course, up against uh, if the, the, the chances of actually getting into the top. Top six. So here we go. As the wife is over there in the corner, there sneaky beaky. But anyway, let's jump the deep in there. Of course, we'll recap those the results and the figures and all that kind of stuff. Four new it was in the end. Blackburn Row was picking up a cheeky three points. Uh, the first goal, a cherry, an absolute cherry on top for for Harry Pickering on the 16th minute. A beautiful uh, through ball from Buck Buckaroo there. Long looping high ball. He manages to get ahead on it. Uh, of course, a goal that Alan Shearer will be proud of. Absolute zinger over the top of the keeper to give us the the lead. Uh, we doubled that lead. Of course, on the 35th minute, when Big Bad Boy Burton Diaz made it 2-0 uh, to make it uh, halfway, pretty much all, the, pretty much close to the money, getting this game over and wrapped up with 2-0. It was uh, just before uh, the half time, and of course we waited to the brink of half time to really wrap up the game. Daryl Allen with a 45th minute winner, well, well not winner, but of course the pretty much game over after this point. Another free kick, Joe Rothwell this time delivered the ball, uh, of course, uh, onto a plate, and that plate was Daryl Allen's head into the back of the net to make it 3-0, and of course wrapped it all up at the end there. There on the 60th minute, uh, Big Bad Boy Burton Diaz gets his second, and of course, Rovers fourth. Game over, it was. Uh, and of course, home and host Rovers looked good today without really, to be honest with you, they kind of did a full on. Well, we kind of did a full on them, really. Uh, we didn't really get out of second gear. I think we weren't really pushed, to be honest with you. Rovers but being a bit cautious, taking Diaz off. He could have probably had another, and I think he, could, he probably would have got himself another if he would have stayed on the field. But good performance overall. Let's talk about the standouts here. We're talking about Daryl Lennon, was fantastic at the back, captain's performance, commitment as well was called into action and needed to be t to be on his best to keep him at bay but Buckley Travis and of course Rothwell that midfield trio is, is working an absolute treat as well. Of course, we've got Travis, the workhorse who's, who's making things tick of course stopping uh, anything building in the opposition half there and then Buckaroo and Rothwell, the creative forces. The two different kind of players. Buckley with the vision, the the, the creativity. Up against Joe Rothwell's dyna, dy, dyna, dy, dynamoism. That's the word I'm looking for. Of course, two different kind of players. And of course, we are lucky to have them both uh, Rovers. But for how long? That's, of course, the question. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the stats here. Of course, 51% possession for Rovers on the day. 49% for, of course, Peterborough. 13 shots as well for Rovers. Just three of them off target. The rest of them are on target. Of course, four of them in the back of the net. As for Peterborough, seven of them, uh, seven shots on the day. Two off target. Three shots were saved and as you can see down there we had more corners than they did uh we, they had more free kicks than we did and of course uh we had more offside as well let's take a look, look, look there's some more stats and details of course as we break it down we had three big chances uh of course uh total and we never missed any of them of course as for people they had three big chances and missed all three of them so unfortunately they uh they managed to, to not get any luck in their way as you can see it's a completely one-sided uh stats wise of course shots go in favor of us uh, corner kicks as well as for the counter attacks go two for rovers uh six shots inside the box seven shots outside the box more passes than they they did better pass success rate as well uh everything going in favor of us jewels one though go in favor of peterborough how about aerial jewels do we see that on here i don't think we do uh aerial jewels one they will actually beat us with aerial jewels which of course was one of the weaknesses uh before the game let's take a look at the first half then first half dominated by rovers 55 percent possession compared to their 45 we had seven shots compared to their two four shots of them on target two of them off target as well three corners two offsides rovers absolutely cruising 242 passes to their 203 
Uh, we wanted it more today. Uh, dribbles inside the box as well. Well, not dribbles, just dribbles, period. Uh, better luck with them than they did as well. And, of course, as you see, dominated up and down the field. Then as for the second half, again, uh, Peter did start in first the first five minutes of the second half were going in favour of Peter, but unfortunately they couldn't they couldn't erase their game, unfortunately. They had more uh, five shots for them second half. We had six, three of them on target for us, two of them for them uh, as well. Big chances as well, three for them in the second half, two, uh, sorry, three missed as well. Rovers, just one big chance, and we converted it to make it 4-0. Uh, and that was game set and match for Rovers. Again, let's take a look at, at uh, of course, the start 11, starting with Rovers, Kaminsky between sticks. They had a back five today, or back three, really. Scotty Wharton, Daniel Ayala, and Darren Lennon, and it worked a treat. However, Ayala was substituted uh, midway through the half, around about 27 minutes, of course, and Bradley Johnson came on and done an A-OK -okay job as a sweeper uh, today. And, of course, uh, into the full max, we had, of course, Ryan Nyambe and Harry Pickering. Pickering with, of course, a goal today, which, of course, phenomenal for him. And, of course, Travis Rothwell and Bukaru in those midfield slots. Of course, Tyree Stolen uh, and Big Bob Burden is uh, supporting the, the, the charge. £11 million rated dollars, uh, of course. As for the substitutions of the Rovers, we did see uh, the likes of uh, Kadra coming on, and he is, uh, of course, a whippet. Uh, so good to see him. And maybe I'd love to see that deal made permanent. If that's the value, uh, 250000 I'd love to make that a permanent deal. Uh, Bradley Johnson as well uh, uh, coming on to help us out. And, of course, Danny Butterworth uh, had a couple of efforts as well to, to add to the tally. As for, of course, the visitors, David Cornell between the sticks at Beavers, uh, Frankie Kent and Nathan Thompson make up a back three with Jack Taylor, Norburn, uh, defensive midfielders with Joe Ward out right. Uh, we had Dan Butler out left. Dembele, of course, was involved with a lot of stuff. Uh, Sammy Semedic and, of course, Johnson Clark Harris uh, on the score sheet. Uh, not on the score sheet, but, of course, leading the charge for them. As for, of course, the uh, substitution of Colour Coventry coming on, of course, uh, as did Harrison Burrows, Ronnie Edwards as well. Uh, a couple of youngsters as well, so good uh, potential for the future. Of course, that's Peterborough's model here, uh, getting the young guns, of course, getting some foot first footballing experience for them and selling them on for a bit of money. Uh, so, uh, yeah, good chance for them to get some game game time, but unfortunately, they couldn't change it up so far. Let's take a look at uh, some match ratings then, shall we, of course, for you. Uh, of course, they give the man a match for Joe Rothwell. Looks like 8.7 for him. Uh, Darren Allen with 8.3 as well. I thought, um, I thought Buckaroo was up there. A great version as well for Rose. As for Peter Rose, the man of the match was De uh, Seke Dembele with 8.1, so fair play. He was involved in pretty much everything uh, that was good for Peter Again, he will be playing in the championship, no, no questions asked next season. It just depends where he will be playing, whether it will be Peter Bro, will it be somewhere else. Uh, of course, down at the bottom of the screen there, you can see sort of uh, uh, an interactive map or, or, or where things happen, the goals, the substitutions, all that kind of stuff, the red card, the yellow cards as well. As of course, Diaz picked up a cheeky yellow, uh, as did a couple of players for uh, Peterborough as well. Let's take a look at the shot grid then, shall we? Of course, Rovers are orange uh, compared to Peter's as Blue, of course, a couple of long range shots from Peterborough, uh, quite a few shots with inside the box as well. As for Rovers, shots from all over the place, including inside the box and inside the six yard area as well, as we tried to really stretch the game. So, um, yeah, yeah, not too bad indeed for Rovers in the end. As for um, heat maps, as you can see, a lot of grass covered by Rovers, of course. As for Peterborough, uh, a couple of areas that were hot spots for them, of course. Uh, um, they like to uh, to keep the possession in that, those areas, preferring down the right-hand side for themselves. Of course, Rovers, again, like I said, spread out. Uh, and as you see, there are pockets of orange where, of course, it's the right-hand side that I think Rovers prefer with Nyambe. Uh, and, of course, who was on the right-hand side? It, was, it wasn't... Uh, it was, well, I, I would like to say Diaz... Um, but I'm not too sure, actually, because they were all over the place. They were all over the place. But they prefer the right-hand side. Of course, Nyambe uh, just gives it heart and soul, left, right and centre, of course, uh, for Blackburn Rovers. Meanwhile, what did the gaff have to say? Here's Tony Mowbray with his short, sharp take on the match up against Peterborough. What's his thoughts? Take it away, Tony. I think it was important that we got the intensity right, we got the um, adrenaline levels right with, with total respect to Peterborough. It's, it's not West Brom or Bournemouth, you know, it's, it's, um, it was a game that if you don't approach it with the right mentality, it, uh, they can be, um, you know, banana skins for you, really. So, um, really pleased with the attitude and the approach and the desire and the commitment of the team and um, we scored some good goals we worked extremely hard delighted for the goalkeeper and the defence that they kept a clean sheet and um, yeah I think you know it, let's move on to the next one let's um, good professional performance I think um, got the balance right between aggression and composure and um, yeah it was a, it was a good performance I think if I was going to give it a um, an adjective, uh, yeah, decent. Tell us about Pickering's goal. To get across a centre back like that, you, you said this week we'd see more of him. And playing in that left wing back position, how much does it suit him? Well, we'll find out moving forward whether it suits him. It, um, 
I think he's got a really good engine. I think he's got good technical ability. He's got game understanding. It's um, we do a lot of work on dropping diagonals over over defences. It's um, you know, and it's a balance between risking the ball but actually putting it into an area where you can score a goal. And um, you know, that would normally be one of our wide attackers coming in on there. But because we playing three attackers and wing backs higher. We we did some work this week on the on the strikers narrowing off their back line and, and the wing back getting in off the back end of that. So um, yeah, I said he's a great kid. Whatever you ask him to do, he'll do it. You know, what's good about this football team at the moment is we have some amazing human beings who love football. And as I've talked to you about growth mindsets, they want to learn, they want to ask questions, they come into the the booths that we've got with the touch screens that uh, they watch all of their clips I could have maybe done this I should have done that I could have played that pass they're brilliant kids they want to learn and get better and it's uh, you know it's great to work with them and, and see them improving and um, and yet you know the, the biggest thing probably is, is the days when we lose a couple of games how they react how they manage to deal with the negativity that might come their way or um, and I think they've dealt with it pretty well. They're doing okay. They've got to keep growing and um, and see where this journey takes them. Did you take Ben out of it because he's played so much football, or he's on a yellow card? Bit of both. Not a yellow card. No, I talked to him half time. I was going to bring him off. I I'd give him the opportunity to go and score a goal, and um, and we'd had a chat about it. You know, and he he wasn't. He wasn't um, arguing. I think he, as, I'm, as he's running, I can see him blowing. It's, it was tough for him tonight. I think, it, um, and I think you know he's not a player that we rotate in and out. He's one of our robust players who I feel can play ninety minutes after ninety minutes after ninety minutes. And yet, I think the game was done, and I think um, there was no need to keep Brereton on to think he could get a hat trick. He, and he's fine with that. He scored two goals. Off he come. Let's go. Got a game on Saturday. He needs to be ready and. Um, and I, listen, Danny Butterworth and, 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 and Kedra, Kedra, have you ever seen anybody as fast as Kedra? You know, it's like an Olympic sprinter when that ball goes in the space behind him. It's, uh, he's an exciting talent. He was disappointed not to start tonight and yet I felt it was time for Dolan to come back because of what he brings our team in a game where we were playing against a team who believed in themselves and, and wanted to play out from the back and wanted the goal kick short and I think, you know, Dolan is well, if not the best player in the league at, at closing down and pressing from the front, he's one of them. And so, um, you know, Redder had to sit on the bench tonight, but again, came off and, and showed what a talent he is. And um, Danny Butterworth, you know, he wants to score goals. You can see it every time he gets it, he's looking for a yard to shoot off either foot. And uh, he's, he's going to have a. As long as he. We've been working on Danny's um, aerobic capacity, he, he's found the running side not difficult he missed two years with a fractured back and um, it's not natural and easy to get up to speed and he's worked really really hard with his aerobic capacity to, to help the team out of possession and, and I see the signs that he's going to be a really exciting prospect he has to be patient with me really of, of when to start him when to put him on he gets disappointed when he doesn't get off, off, off the bench and that's that's a pretty good sign of a striker who wants to wants minutes on the pitch to score goals so yeah I think it's an exciting young team. I think they're, I think they're made of the right stuff. I think um, I think it's an evolving team. If you think of the, the team that we had a few years ago of Graham and Mulgrew and, and Bennett and Conway, it's, it's a team of kids now, and yet they are full of energy, full of drive, want to be footballers, want to get to the Premier League. Um, yeah, I, I enjoy working with them every day. As I said, they've got growth mindsets, and that's, as a coach, the best thing you can have from a footballer. What's been said on social media? We'll start with, of course, uh, where do we start? We start right here. Solstice Inc. said, that's Luna, going nuts. So, brilliant result considering an early change. The injury stacking up on a cold evening, indeed. Meanwhile, Ben, a.k.a. Scalios Blue, or oh, whatever, uh, got to hand it to the players and Mowbray. The way they bounced back after that absolute mauling at the hands of Fulham is mighty impressive. A lot of teams may have all uh, capitulated and gone on a bad run after that loss. Uh, meanwhile, who's this fella here? Is Mr. Mac. That's right. Superb. Well done to all involved. Clinical. Professional. That's the way to do it in this league. Well done, boys. Meanwhile, A. Dryden said, a positive. Clean sheet, quality in possession, lethal going forward, set piece, good set pieces, negatives, defensively vulnerable, especially in transition. Nyambi, poor again. That's a bit harsh. Uh, meanwhile, A. D. 
must have said, well done, boys. Exceptional today with that performance. Indeed, Gary Barrett said, great performance. Felt they took their foot off the gas and could have been a massive second half to put Peter to the sword. That said, you cannot take away over their performance. Cannot take away their performance. Indeed. And right, Toby Walsing, a brilliant to one man uh, from Blackburn tonight. Every player contributing one way or another. Controlled the game perfectly uh, and ruthless in front of goal against a Peter side who looked all over the place and are seemingly facing a big battle to avoid relegation. Chris Martin, not that one, but this one, of course. I know Peter are near the bottom of the league and are fighting relegation, but these games have, have the potential to be a banana skin and we've navigated this risk very, very well. Uh, it says a lot that we can win 4-0 and not really have to do all that much. That's a good sign. It is a bloody good sign. Andy Watson said Joe Rothwell took his game to another level tonight. Fair enough. The opposition wasn't outstanding, but he did everything on the pitch. His fitness levels have come on leaps and bounds. Still underrated by everyone, in my opinion. And, of course, Mikey Dalap, of course. The lovely stuff is all well and good saying they were shit, but rarely do rare Rovers do uh, win so convincingly against these teams. Compact, clinical, and never overstretched. Well done, Rovers. Well done, Rovers, indeed, of course. Let's take a little look. What else we got? Meanwhile, what's been happening elsewhere on the Championship? Let's take a little look, then, shall we? Of course, uh, some of these games were yesterday, of course, Tuesday. Uh, Coventry picked up an no draw against Birmingham. Of course, there was a sending off in that match. Meanwhile, Middlesbrough under Chris Wilder lost to Preston at home. Not great start for him. Blackpool nil, West Brom nil. Not Forest also nil. Luton Town nil, also red card in that game. Meanwhile, Reading picked up a loss against Sheffield United. A big win for them, of course. Uh, as for today, QPR did win to deny Rovers a top six berth. However, Millwall against Bournemouth was 1 1. Uh, Coventry, uh, sorry, Cardiff City did lose to, at home to Hull City. A bit of a shit show there. Of course, big result for Hull City. I think they get it out of the drop zone there. Fulham nil. Uh, Derby County dropped points against, of course, that was top versus bottom. And a massive point for Derby on the road. Uh, goodness gracious I me. Mean, Bristol City picked up a 1 0 over Stoke. And, of course, Swansea picked up a 2 0 over Barnsley. But, of course, the game of the day was at Ewood Park. 4 0 win for Rovers. They've scored uh, pretty much all the more goals goals than everybody else uh, today uh, so well done to us we are in seventh spot guess what a win for us today or on Saturday could see us go third in the table with a bit of luck uh, of course goal difference and all the kind of jazz that is the tail of the tape so far Peter are in 22nd spot but again with them on the weekend they could go up to 18th uh, or 19th sorry uh, as of course we uh, keep ourselves in the hunt uh, for an ambitious outside shot for the playoffs as for of course next weekend uh, we'll see West Brom take another for us on Friday night of course Preston will take on Fulham as well that's on Saturday early kick off there Peter Burrow gets by uh, Birmingham against Blackpool, uh, Bournemouth against Comtry City, Swansea against Reading, Hull against Millwall, Luton Town against Cardiff. Uh, we've also got um, Huddersfield against Middlesbrough, uh, Stoke City. We'll take on Blackburn Rovers at Ewood at, at, uh, at the 365 Stadium. Sheffield United take on Bristol City on Sunday. And of course, Derby County against QPR on Monday. A bit of a weird one there, Monday Night Football, of course, for uh, the Championship as well. So a little bit strange, uh, but of course, that is your lot. Be sure to give the video some love and smash your thumbs up, smash your subscribe, check the links down below on my Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and of course, Patreon as well, boys. As of course we try to kick on this channel another level. Be sure to get the video so check out that links. Make sure you become a patron as well. Check out those options. Patreon.com forward slash rovers. He's 4 0 Rovers in command. Bossed it today. And hopefully the mighty blue and white will kick ass and take names on Saturday. I'll get so we'll have another watch along for that one. So hopefully you'll be joining me with, with, with me for that. I don't know where I'll be. It might be here, it might be on the road. Who bloody knows? Uh, but of course, hopefully you'll be there to see us rip roaring it. Another uh, a big fat win again. Anyway, that's it, my friends. Be sure to get the video so and smash your thumbs up, smash your subscribe, check the links down below on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and of course Patreon as well. But until then, guys, we're done.